All right, you bullies, you've been brought on to teach these local villagers that their prices are just way too high. You're gonna do a little work for me. Make sure they know what the prices should be in the future, and I'd really appreciate it. If what? No! We are finally getting into our villager challenge with the create mod and boy do I have a plan plan for today. I am going to make a crazy villager turner with the create mod, but it is going to require a ton of material, especially brass. I'm going to need so much brass. And this is where I am getting all that wonderful brass. I also needed to get three zombie uh, influencers. You just saw that happen. And I've gotten three more now, and these troops are even more prepared. They've got diamond swords and super cool hoods. So we'll be seeing them shortly. Well, plans are made, materials are gathered. Let's get to work. The villager zombificator is complete. And look at this build. Definitely different from what I normally make, and I love it. And not to mention, we have this cool little neighboring build right next to us. The deal's still put together. Don't want to spoil it too much, though. But definitely check out his video on his new train villager storage thing. I'm a Bob. It's pretty amazing. But let's go over my villager turner, shall we? Over here, you can see our zombie influencers. The villagers come along this orange track right here and stop on that little green spot right there to be influenced by the influencers for a short period, and then they move on. They then come over to this portal where I've supplied golden apples and weakness potions. Now this part messed me up and this machine was so much more impressive. It had so many more gears and circuits. And then I realized it was pointless because if the machine feeds the apple to the villager, it does nothing. The player needs to feed the apple themselves to get the trades lowered or nothing happens. So now the villager will come to this spot and stop and wait for assistance. Whenever assistance is needed, these lights will be lit to let you know if you're in the area that, hey, villagers are needing help. And then you'll come on down, you'll press this button and weakness potion will drop down for a moment and weaken the poor villager. Then you give them the apple and you press this button and they continue on their way to the next station. They then come into a nice relaxing little waiting room where they can enjoy themselves and just get to feeling normal again after they're influencing. The villagers will spend five minutes waiting here enjoying themselves and then they'll move on to whatever is next for them. 
I say whatever is next because that's where the real technical side of this machine comes in. You see, a villager needs to be influenced five times to get the cheapest prices on trades. So they have to go around and around until they're fully done. But the game doesn't just know that it's been five times and eject the trader. No, I had to make a counting system and all sorts of things. And there are some crazy circuits going on on the inner workings of this machine. Now, if for instance, I don't want the villager to go around a whole five times, I can just come over here and push this callback button, which ends the current cycle when it's done. I also made a whole bunch of cart contraptions. Villagers will always be on one of these cart contraptions, which is a seat. And let's go ahead and set this cart off, pretending like there's a villager on it. You'll see the light goes on. That means the machine is in use and cannot accept another villager at the time. This is where the influencers would be doing their influence for 15 seconds and then it moves on and awaits my input. And as you can see, the lights are now on, letting me know there's a villager waiting. So I would weaken them, feed them, and then let them go on their merry way. Now the theme is steampunk, but it is also ruined. If you couldn't tell, that's why there's leaves inside, there's glass missing, carpet missing. This place is old and it's been beat up, but it's still hanging on. Look, we even got fence support showing through where the bricks have fallen away. We've got leaves growing into the machinery. And yeah, this place has definitely seen some better days, but it's still working just fine. Now when the villagers done, they'll make their way back here and along this side, which is really just a hallway that's not meant to be seen. But then they end up back here at the beginning. Now, after they're on their fifth cycle, this track junction here will flip and they'll go out the ejection right here. As they do, they'll hit that little detector rail down there, which will reset the whole system. And here we have the tower, which is fairly damaged. I really like how this came out. You can see the reinforcement where there's no brick. It's overgrown with leaves and nature is reclaiming the whole area. A whole massive cogwheel has fallen from above. And we got a little bit of a dome glass area up top. Really like how that turned out. Let's go ahead and make our way around to the back of the building and take a look down in the basement. So here we have our basement or cellar, whatever you want to call it. If you want to get in, we push that button there and bam, the door opens up. And I like to close the door just for safety's sake. And this is the basement where most of the magic is happening. So over here, we have this line of redstone. This controls three different things. Now the detector rail I just showed you that resets the whole system powers this line here. And what it does, it resets the lights, it resets the tracks and it resets the counter. Then over here, this is the main brains of the system. This is a counter that I came up with. And what's happening is every time the villager completes a cycle, it sends a quick signal to this redstone link right here, which pushes this observer into this switch, which powers it just long enough so it flips over and back. What that does is allow one sword from here to go into the next hopper. You'll see there's two swords there. Let me flip it again. There we go. Now there's two swords here, three swords there. And you'll see as this hopper fills up, this redstone line gets powered slowly. Right now it's powered to about there. Let's go ahead and give it another flip. It's now powered to about there. And when I flip the switch one more time, it will power all the way to the repeater, which powers that redstone link, which then sends a signal to this redstone link, which then sends power to these repeater thingies and then flips this switch. Let's watch that happen really quick by flipping this. There you see it's powered and this one's about to go off again and it's powered and now the whole system's reset and we have five swords ready to count again. A very little known fact about turning villagers to zombies and back that beds in their area can help reduce the amount of time it takes for them to turn back into a villager. Generally it takes between three and five minutes on Java, but this can speed things up. So why not add them? There's a lot of technical numbers to it. So I'm not going to bore you with all the stats, but just know put a bunch of beds in a close proximity to a turning villager and it will speed up their time of turning. Over here we have our tank, which is really full. And all of this is weakness potion. I have brewed up so much weakness potion and it gets pulled out of this tube all the way up here and sent up above. Then over here, we have a bit of an automatic potion brewing system. This basin right here is always filled with water and I can send fermented eyes into the system. I can either add them right here in this barrel or I can put them in this sorter up above 
and they drop down into the basin and get to brewing up. Now this is fully automated. First of all, there's a blaze burner down there that needs to be powered. So I have a deployer here filled with all sorts of fuel to fuel the thing, but I don't want it constantly being fueled and I don't want the system constantly working. So I've got the system off when not in use. But if anything goes into this hopper right here, this comparator reads it and sends out some signals. And there you can see it's creating a little bit of a clock going as long as there's item in the hopper. If I take them out, it stops immediately and the whole system stops but there could still be material in there cooking. So I had to leave the machine running. I've done the math, the max amount of items that can be stored in the base and waiting to cook comes out to right around a minute and 15 seconds wait time. So after a minute and 15 seconds, this machine turns itself off. So not only do we have a pretty amazing villager zombificator, we've got a super efficient and technical potion brewing system along with it. You know what's something that is super cool that the create mod can do? Make two-sided elevators that can get you up and down the highest of cliffs. I even made this great tutorial right there teaching you how to make this wonderful elevator. So check it out. It's even how I get up to Skybase. But that's going to do it for now out here at the Zombie Turnificator. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.